This paywall increased my revenue from 2,500 per week to 5,300 per week. In this video, I will deep dive why it works so well and guide you step by step on adding it to your own project, complete with source code. So I took the leap of faith and I added this paywall to all my apps. The result, week after week growth. This is not a month of revenue. This is a week of revenue. And let's compare it to the beginning of June, $2,500 per week. And that was already up 15%. And then compared to two years ago, $2,600 per month. Just in a week, I'm earning double what I would earn in a month, all thanks to this paywall. Five years ago, my startup failed. Total collapse, I was in debt over $200,000. Cars were repossessed, I lost everything. So unfortunately that meant that my tax has been snowballing the last couple of years. I just need to raise an extra $37,000 and I'll be debt free. Based on the success of this paywall, I predict that I will be debt free in the next couple of months. The existing paywall was just an existing Swift UI sheet that could be dismissed at any time. This new paywall goes full screen and has a five second cooldown before being dismissed. A lot of people think this is a bit of a gray area, a bit of a, a bit of a dark pattern. I've submitted it to the App Store and I've been very transparent with how the functionality works and haven't had that rejected by the App Store review team. I think of it like this. Go to the App Store and download any game. Pick a game as long as it's free. Play for a few minutes and you'll be presented with an ad that has a cool down feature to dismiss the ad. I think of the paywall as an ad. And one of the benefits of subscribing is removing the annoying paywalls. Let me know your thoughts on that. What do you think about, about that feature? That's the only thing that's a bit of a gray area for me. So this paywall is shown after the onboarding process on my apps. And then also when they click the unlock premium button within the app or want to access a feature of the app that's locked behind a paywall. It's clear to me that the biggest impact is the inclusion of the free trial as a weekly plan. If you wanted to subscribe for a year, you get a heavy discount of the app, but no free trial. I think this works because it feels like less of a commitment. You feel like you're locking into a contract for a week versus locking into a contract for a year. And I think that's why this is working so well. Does the weekly plan cannibalize annual sales? Yes. Yes, it does. The annual subscription was generating about $300 to $400 on average per week. Adding the new paywall, the annual subscription dropped down to about $100 per week. Comparatively, the weekly subscriptions are consistently generating over $400 per week. How does the paywall impact subscription retention? Retention has increased. So according to stats, the introductory offer conversion rate is up 9.4%. 63% of people that sign up for the free trial end up converting to a paid weekly plan or annual plan. 37% of subscribers renew after the first week, 14% renew after the second week, and 46 renew after the third week. I have no stats on renewal periods for an annual plan because this particular app hasn't been up and running for over a year. So I've got no one renewing their subscriptions since rolling out monetization on this app. What price should I set? So I've made a, a quick lifetime value calculator in Excel. Lifetime value of a user signing up for $7.99 per week is $11.37 according to my calculations. That's based on the consecutive renewal periods from the app store. And if we drop that down to $4.99, the lifetime value is around about $7. And then I set the annual price to around about 10 to 20% of the user subscribing for a full year on the weekly plan. Lifetime value is lower, but revenue is higher. What's going on? More people are signing up to the free trial and more people are converting from free trial to subscription on a weekly plan. The net result is more revenue. How cool is that? And that's counterintuitive to anything that I thought. Does it only work for certain apps? Yes, yes it does. 
To clarify, all of my apps are consumer apps, utilities, not games, anything like that. One of my apps not doing as well is my Metal Stud Finder, which also had the new plans introduced. And I haven't seen a growth in revenue at all. In fact, I've seen an 18% decrease in revenue. And that comes with a 13% increase in downloads. So theoretically, if I hadn't have done anything, I would have increased my revenue by 13% on this app. I think most people are downloading this app for a single use or a single purpose, and then they don't need the app after using it. So a weekly subscription doesn't work. Only 19% of people convert from the free trial. There's not enough data to show any renewals. I'm releasing the source code for this paywall onto my GitHub. Link down below in the comments of the video. And here it is. This is the code to initialize the view, customize the title and the features in purchase view. Select an icon from the default SF symbols and update the purchase model with your existing in-app purchased subscription code. Check it out download it, add it to your app, make some more revenue, tell me how it goes, do some experiments and let me know how it works. Tag me in Twitter. I would love to know if this is increasing your revenue. In conclusion, it turns out users want a weekly plan. If you're not offering users that weekly plan, you're simply leaving money on the table. If you like this sort of content, subscribe. I release two videos every week just following my journey as an indie app developer, showing you what works and what doesn't work.